welcome to today's uh, show that we will we'll be talking about how to target decision makers in B2B sales. Uh, so I am Pradna Kakade Singh from the Brand March. So we work with uh, companies to be build sustainable branding ecosystem by aligning their branding and digital strategies. And I'm grateful to be here hosting this talk show with Suhasini on the topic of how to target decision makers in B2B sales. So Suhasini selling is a process, it's a discovery process. And if you get it right once, you can multiply your business growth. So gone are the times, you know, when shooting in the dark, cold calling, buying the directories, buying the database, it's all the passe now. Uh, so uh, we would like to hear from you, Suhasini, and uh, that, you know, for small businesses, growth depends on managing sales effectively. So this means that we need to target the right people, invest our time and energy in the right way so that, you know, we get best returns. So going ahead, uh, should we start uh, selling to the top, to the senior leaders who can take purchase decisions or is it easier to start by selling at some level below so what's your does it, even matter? does it let's ask whether it matters does it matter so does whether, it, you sell, whether you start a, a, or approach an organization by selling to a senior person i mean i'm saying senior only by it's not that the seniority matters what matters mm -hmm. is whether the person is the that person who's going to take a decision for your product or service. So let's ask ourselves this question. It, does it matter whether I start and I reach out to people who have the authority and who probably may be senior, who have the authority to take a decision about my product or service, or is it okay if I start with somebody junior and kind of work my way through whatever is going on? So I'm going to start by saying it actually makes a huge difference. And I can say this from experience because I have made this mistake when I was less experienced. And I think that I still see a lot of the people that I talk to, mentor, consult. I know that a lot of uh, small business founders or their business development managers are still making this mistake. So it makes a huge difference. If you are pitching to, if you are in front of decision makers, if you pitch to them, and if you are able to persuade them, your sales cycle will be much shorter. You will actually face less frustration and you will actually close more deals. Now, who is the decision maker depends on your product or service. So in B2B, you know, it could be a simple product like some stationery or coffee for the coffee machine. You know, those are also B2B products. In that case, if your decision maker is say the facilities manager, then maybe you don't need to go to the CEO. It's okay because you, you know the decision maker. So it's not necessary that you have to always go to somebody very senior. But on the other hand, if you are selling, say, some you know, high value product, some industrial equipment or some enterprise software, and the decision is going to be taken by the C-suite, what we call the C-suite, that is your CHRO, chief of HR, CFO, chief of finance, COO, Chief of Operations, CEO, Chief Executive Officer, the head of the company, if they are going to be taking, your, uh, taking the decision, then it's not a good idea to start by pitching to someone junior who doesn't have the authority. This is not an effective way, use of our time and energy. And this is something I've learned, as I said, from the hard knock school of life, having made this mistake many, many times. Right, Suhasini. So uh, moving on, everyone wants to feel like, you know, important and valued. So even if, you know, they are not actually signing on the dotted line, most of the time a salesperson makes contact, you know, with an incorrect prospect and fails to convert that lead into sales. So with this, you know, why pitching to junior manager is usually not effective? And how do we identify the decision makers for our specific products and services? Yes, that's true that pitching to people who don't have the decision-making authority is usually not effective and doesn't lead to sales. So uh, now again, why does it happen? So it happens because when we start selling, uh, whether you are a startup founder, maybe quite young or a mid-sized company founder, or you are a salesperson, 
maybe not very experienced and you are told to target some organization this organization could be i don't know whatever tata motors or ibm or infosys or whichever first of all this itself is a very daunting task and then within that to figure out who is going to be my decision maker now if i if i'm told if i if i have this even this desire that you know it's going to be the cfo or the ceo of this company who's my decision maker then there is first of all there is a great disparity in power the power equation at many many levels at the you know business level financial level at the social level there is a great disparity of power so for example uh, you know if we both have to go for the meeting at 9 am to her office i'm going for a presentation she comes like you know in some long and fancy car i may be on a two wheeler or um, a, a small uh, entry level car and there are so many other things now all these subtle subtle things affect our confidence and i'm going to also talk to you later about how to actually uh, you know deal with this disparity of power and not be overwhelmed by it but anyway the point is that given this disparity of power we sometimes being uh, if we lack in confidence we find it more comfortable to reach out to junior managers within the same organization we feel we've got an entry we've got our foot in the door okay we have a comfort with that person maybe somebody closer to our age you know i am on a two wheeler he is also on a two wheeler so you know that kind of an equation right uh, these are very very subtle things which we usually don't articulate but they do make a difference right somebody whom i can say you know hey let's talk uh, is it your tea break let's go out have a chai and a vada pav so that type of an equation is a comfort zone now this person may promise to take my pitch forward may promise to um you know put me in touch with decision makers may promise to actually process my proposal through the company yeah. sincerity this junior manager may actually ask me for a lot of information you know they may be uh, engaging with me out of curiosity or even out of a sense of helpfulness but to be able to talk to their bosses they will ask me for tons and tons of information even costing i have even seen situations where they will even do price negotiation for absolutely no reason okay but they will do yes. no no this is too much why i mean what is the point of saying this is too much or this price is too high if you are not going to take a decision even after i lower my price that's that is something we need to keep in mind anyway the thing is that this this can go on for a long time they may ask you for a lot of information they may promise to put you in touch uh but now let's understand what happens on the outside the 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 small business founder or the or the business development person thinks okay i have provided all the information my contact asked for and i have provided the costing and i have even negotiated the costing as she said and now she is going to do a lot of stuff internally for me she is going to go to the senior people and she is going to kind of be able to push my proposal through that's what i feel i feel i have done everything and now the sale will come okay uh, audience can let us know whether this resonates okay you all can let us know whether this resonates you all can put stuff on the chat if you feel it makes sense doesn't make sense whatever okay so now the thing is that this is what is what i'm feeling on the outside but what's happening on the inside is something very different firstly this uh, this individual doesn't have the cloud internal cloud to actually push my proposal through if if she or he even goes to the ceo or, or to somebody very senior and says you know uh, suhasini has been coming for meetings and meeting me and she is suggesting that we revamp our marketing strategy okay is she is that person really going to say it with the with the authority and conviction most unlikely what what she like to be say her body language and all will be like you know swasni has been coming you know so and so she has this company she has come here for two three times for meetings she is saying something like you know we should we could really look at our marketing strategy sir aap dekh lo what do you feel you know something like that that's going to be probably the approach now this her boss or if, even assuming it's somebody very senior ceo whatever she or he may turn around and say what who told you to look at the marketing strategy right now you know 
just forget it we'll look at look at it after six months that's it it's over she's going to just kind of retreat from that the cabin so first of all uh she doesn't have the clout second thing is even if she starts talking about what you have told her if if the boss is even open to listen she'll say hey listen so as is saying you know let's look at our marketing strategy how is she going to convey the benefit uh and how is she going to convey my capability she has not she doesn't have the conviction or the clout to actually be able to persuade that decision maker the way i could have if i was in front of that same person i would have said hey listen you need new marketing strategy you know what you've been doing has not been working for these reasons and i'll tell you why when we give you something it can work this is the time to do it why is this the perfect time to do it the the kind of conviction with which i could have sold my own product or service that is never going to happen with this so called internal champion if the internal champion is not sufficiently empowered firstly and you know she we when when i say empowered it means she is not really the decision maker for my product or service so that is the reason why uh, these things usually don't don't uh, don't uh, work and that's why you know for us to be able to provide compelling arguments compelling reasons why the company should buy our product or service we need to sell top down and not down to up yeah hope that yes. makes sense a uh, complete sense vasini so as you really put it so right it's all about the mindset game because most of the time whether it be it be as a business owner or our business development team we are comfortable with a kind of person with whom we can really interact at a friendly level and create a rapport so for a bd person or for a business development person to create a rapport with the top management there is a huge gap you know as you mentioned it like you know you coming up in a particular set of you know coming from a different mindset and the c uh, csuit people come from a complete different uh, segment they, they operate at a very different level so building that gap is one thing so with a lot of conviction the sales person or when you as a business person reach out there you need to be uh, just there uh, calibrating to what is the need of the person who is sitting across the table who is a decision maker and another point which you mentioned suhasini is the conviction part the how can we the with the conviction i can sell my product or i know like you know what is required for the other person after you know having a sense of conversation with them so that entire thing makes up so sense because it's not a standardized offering that we always do we always talk about customization as well so be it products or services and fitting it to the requirement of the customer and calibrating it correctly i think that is the whole uh, point that we are talking about and uh, with this suhasini uh, one very interesting thing is since the decision maker has the power to say yes it also means that you know they have a power to say no and close the chapter there itself so uh, before you approach the right person i think we should be ready with our homework and you know the mindset needs to be there in place you know you need to be in that frame where you actually talk to the decision maker so my next question uh, here to you is how do we approach the decision maker and the things that we need to be ready in the first place for the first meeting because it's like you know one opportunity and you know one readiness so how do you plan that up so before that pradya i'll just touch upon how do we identify decision makers because you know yes. there is some kind of sometimes it can be a little uh, blurry over there also so i'll discuss that and then i'll talk about how do we really approach them and and uh, prepare for that so as i was mentioning when you know we were waiting for people to join the call that in in uh, mba marketing we are taught that there are five types of buyers within the organization i don't know if it's five or four or whatever there's a there's a economic buyer there's a technical buyer there is your champion there is influencer there's something else now these things are taught to us in our mba most of us do our mba without much of work experience it all sounds good in a textbook okay 
it's uh, it's all perfect in a textbook. Actually, when you go for an exploratory meeting, meeting people are not sitting there wearing t-shirts saying, "I'm the influencer, I'll be your champion." You know, it, and and also uh, every sale and every organization is different. Okay, uh, the person whom you find to be a champion in one organization, in another organization, it could be a different role. So you can't really generalize. Uh, I'm not saying that there was no value in that model we studied. There probably was some value to it, but uh, real, in reality, we we need to find, uh, identify the decision makers for our products or services. So if your organization has been selling, if it's an organization which is some years old and has been selling, then even if you come into the uh, function for business development new, you can actually sit and map. Like if there is a CRM, with whom was the first meeting, with whom was the second meeting, with whom was the third meeting, who was there in the final you know, last presentation before we got the deal. So that kind of data we can look at, we can map those, who were the stakeholders and who's final, who was the final authority who gave the decision. So for example, if I sell to say industries, I have some industrial product and I sell to industries, my company has been selling before I join, then from the CRM, I can actually map, okay, we've been selling to plant head, we've been selling to whoever, VP production, we've been selling to COO, who, uh, what have we been uh, interacting with each of them and who has taken the final call? So look at those and actually map it. In some cases, it's not defined, but you need to define it. So that's one thing. If you are a startup, then reach out to many organizations and try a few different approaches, okay? Uh, it changes a little from company to company, but you will get some general idea. For example, if you say my solution will reduce cost of production or, or the time of production, or it will optimize production equipment, okay, that's what my solution can do. Now, should I be talking to the plant head or should I be talking to the CEO who has responsibility of all the plants? Now, this is something which you will have to approach many organizations and figure out. You know, whether this decision is typically taken at the plant level or whether it's taken at the corporate level and uh, which one will work better for you is something that you need to figure out. So map each of these. If you are a startup, go out and try and do lots and lots of sales so that you can map who it is. If you are uh, in a company which has been selling, map your past uh, uh, deals and decide who are the important decision makers and start by trying to get in front of them as soon as possible, as early as possible, as early in the sales cycle as possible and not too late. Uh, Coming right. to your second question. Yeah. yeah, your second question is how do we approach them? So I mentioned the balance of power is lopsided, which affects our confidence, okay? Again, I'll say that the person who I'm trying to pitch to is more powerful than me, is more successful than me, is richer than me, is, you know, in every way is written, uh, published about in the newspaper, so many things, right? But, uh, and that can affect my confidence. But remember that, where do I draw the confidence from when I'm faced with this situation, okay? I'll tell you where I draw the confidence, the confidence from. The best source of confidence, it's not whether you polish your shoes, it's, it's not whether you, you know, have a very good bag. No, it's none of those things. Some people will tell you that those things matter. They matter to some extent. To me, you draw your confidence from the conviction that whatever I am selling is really going to be hugely beneficial to this person. She may be, yeah, she may be a CEO. She may be on the Forbes magazine. Like I said, she's come to the office in a lovely car. Yes, all that is true. But I know that she is losing money on her every shop floor. And I have the solution for that. And I'm going to tell her about that. So that is the kind of conviction that you must draw. You must think about it very calmly and coolly. Once you have this conviction, the, that confidence will convey itself in very subtle ways. You don't have to shout. You don't have to bang the table. Because you have that conviction and confidence, it will convey to you, to the other person in, in a very subtle way. Your gaze will be steady. Your voice will be low. Okay, uh, and, I, and my experience in a room full of people, when I speak in a low voice, everyone stops speaking. Okay, this has been my experience. So, uh, I mean, that's gold mind, Suhasini, what you just said, like, you know, conviction, 
and uh, basically it's like you know learning gives us knowledge and we get wisdom through our calibration skills and through our experience and the conviction that we have that we are giving the right solution yes so you if you have the conviction that i'm giving you the right solution and you discuss that with her okay now the other thing you brought up a very important point pradha is prepare pre preparation you know how prepared were was i for this so yes that is very important because these are important people their time is short they appreciate be you being prepared okay if your uh, prospect has published some article or even a linkedin post or has spoken at a conference you can mention that ma'am i heard you speaking this and you know our product will help you with that so that breaks the ice that builds the rapport that creates something which you both have in common right so that's why we really need to do our homework we really need to read about the company recent initiatives trends movements and this will help you speak in a way that connects with the prospect yeah so those are some of the things about being prepared and approaching people all uh, right so swasini so uh, while this conversation is going on one uh, question that you know just popped up uh, that you know uh, we are talking about an individual as a business person or as a head of marketing or sales Uh, approaching and speaking up to the decision maker so how do we train our uh, business development or our team you know with the same mindset same conviction that a business person has uh, sorry i kind of lost you the question was that how do we train the business development person to have the same conviction as uh... yes so as a business person or when i go and speak to my clients i'm with the full conviction i speak with them i understand and there is like you know on the table that you know i calibrate and i put up my solutions to meet the requirement so how do we ensure as a business owner that our sales team or our business development team follows that path and you know they okay, are that's also... a very good question very good question so i'll i'll tell you what i feel if you uh, tell the sales person here's a product here's a box go out and sell it they'll never have that conviction you know because then even if you tell me a box hai now you go to director of tata motors and you push this box what is going on in my head my god this guy is so big why will he listen to me for even one minute you know how am i supposed to sell this how am i supposed to talk to him this is really what is going on in my mind so that is why uh, it may not come through but if you explain to me that listen you know when tata motors is doing these 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 things it is actually not doing it in the most effective way they are actually being revenue on these these processes we have a solution nobody else has now take this box and tell him how with with this you putting this box there tata motors can save on a minute by minute basis something that adds up over the years to hundreds of crores then the sales person will have the conviction so it's a matter of helping the sales person to look outside in and not inside out to not think about sales as pushing something out but to think about sales as being a solution for the same person that we're talking about this decision maker that person's objectives helping her to go towards her objectives and that person's challenges helping her to overcome those challenges so if that sales person says my job is to go there and help this person to achieve what she is there to achieve and i am bringing this box which has it then uh, he or she will carry that conviction uh yes so suhasini yes thanks for putting this so you know summarizing i've just taken so many notes because you know every session is so powerful and there are so many takeaways so first thing that you know you have mentioned is about identifying analyzing the data that we have so the data of the companies or the stakeholders that we have been interacting so each company is different each company has a different uh, levels so maybe a vice president of one company could be a decision maker while some other company would be the ceo directly so it's completely depends from a company to company and analyzing categorizing our client and really understanding that process of you know for which company who could be the right source of person you know who will help me convert my lead into sales 
the second uh, thing that you really spoke about is the conviction with through which a business owner sells and at the same time the business owner trains uh, his uh, employees his sales team you know so that every person who goes out there in the market carries the same confidence carries the brand and there is a standardization though your solutions whatever product or solution you are offering is customized so understanding the requirement conviction analyzing the data so and building rapport is what you know summarizing this is what i am looking at so suhasini uh, with this uh, insightful uh, and helpful conversation that we are having uh, we can open up for the session i just uh, yeah before we go to question i'll just say one more thing yes. that many b2b products and sales that are multiple stakeholders so uh, your product may have a lot of influence or it may affect the work of the chro it may affect the work of the uh, chief of marketing it may affect the work of the ceo you know so when you go for the presentation and in fact tomorrow we have a whole 3 hour workshop on making presentations to these kind of people so the point is that when you go for a presentation you need to be prepared with uh, understanding the challenges and objectives of these different uh, and you need to address that in the presentation that's why like i said tomorrow uh, 6:30 pm we have a master class on making presentations to this profile of buyer when you are in front of the ceos and you get 45 minutes and people go go ready with a powerpoint most of the time that powerpoint is not done in a way to close the deal okay that powerpoint is an opportunity which is lost what we do is we bunch up a bunch of slides pack them with information and we go and deliver them we look at that slot as मुझे जाके वहां स्लाइड्स डिलीवर करना है बट एज व्हाट दैट स्लॉट इज एक्चुअली फॉर इज फॉर परसुएशन इट्स फॉर परसुएडिंग द पीपल नाउ व्हेन यू गो इनटू दैट प्रेजेंटेशन देयर मे बी स्टेक होल्डर्स विद डिफरेंट रोल्स यू नो एंड 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 हाउ डज योर प्रोडक्ट हेल्प ईच ऑफ दोस रोल्स दैट इज आल्सो वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स सो यू नीड टू बी अवेयर अबाउट about how this product will help the marketing function how it will impact the hr function whoever are the stakeholders for this product yeah someone is saying it's not easy <laughs> uh it's not that easy yeah not easy not everyone can do account based marketing right account so as so marketing is a nice term uh you know and then there will be like a whole bunch of systems that you require for it which is appropriate for larger companies but using the principles that we discussed uh even a smart sales person even the founder of a small business can target decision makers and can close deals by you know thinking about these things deeply whom should i be selling to what should i be offering how do i build a rapport with them how do i do a good presentation so yes i agree abm may not be for everyone but we can use some of the good principles of it yes so uh, so as you have really simplified uh, and made it uh, sound uh, really easy of you know how the sales aspect works so uh, wherein you know when you go for sales we are more focused on what we are wearing and you know whether we are wearing a black or a blue and you know how do we carry ourselves so with that having that right presentation deck with you and which actually hits the nail to the person whom you are presenting so maybe a little bit of homework you know on once you know the profile of the person you are meeting and usually what this is what we do is you know if we study about the if tomorrow i am meeting suhasini kirloskar to present my meeting like you know i have a slot with her so probably i go on her linkedin page i identify what activities she do, does you know a little bit of history of understanding more of uh, suhasini as a person or your uh, prospect as a person also gives one a good point an ice breaker you know to connect and build that rapport in one time so there might be like you know you've been there from a same college or you know some point of time if the person is very senior he had come to your college as a guest lecturer or something so it becomes uh, once you study or you understand the person 
personally also it's not like stalking their uh, page what i'm so saying but it's like you know studying and understanding the person you meet also it's also like you know the matri thing that we keep on doing so understanding a ladka ka se ladki ka se types you know yeah. so if you understand yeah. your so the very good point you brought when we find things in common that helps us to overcome that uh, that uh, great disparity which there is because the power disparity you know just as we are feeling a complex that person is also feeling ki ye kaun hai you know what is the significance of this person but when you bring something in common i heard you at that conference or you know we went to the same college or we worked uh, at one point you know we worked in the same organization or i read that article that you had written and i liked it or you know uh, those thing i attended your webinar whatever those things they bring some kind of a common thing and that helps you to bridge that that big disparity gap and build a rapport and the person is more open to listening to your marketing message after that correct and the person who is at the c suit level you know they bring in so much experience that you know just by looking at you they would understand the depth that you are speaking at so that's you know, what i was saying absolutely that it, there are things which are conveyed in a very subtle manner like you know it doesn't matter if i'm not a great orator or if i don't have the most beautiful powerpoint but like i said if i have that conviction and confidence that i can I, i'm bringing something which is really beneficial to you that will convey itself in very very subtle ways it will convey itself in my uh, uh, eye contact it will convey itself in my body language it will, it will convey itself in my tone of voice and people will take me more seriously so that is a very important ingredient i'm not saying the powerpoint is not important or the dress is not important those are important but this is the heart of it a uh, very true as sales people we are actually going and bringing something that is going to benefit the other company yes because you know if you have a very decorative brochures and collaterals and ppt mails they will say just email it or keep it at the reception and mm -hmm. it's always there but you know if you are confidently carrying the amazing presentation that you have and if you are able to deliver to the person and hit the chord out there i think you know you have half the battle is won that's true so we'll take questions if there are any yeah uh, so uh, till uh, you all can put in your question on the chat and uh, so it's just a thing so suvasini this has been really great uh, conversation with you and a time to all the viewers here to think back of all your sales situation over the last year so how many meetings you did and you know how many real decision makers versus the day to day prospects you know that you all actually encountered with so uh, maybe after the session you all can just have a re look at you know what has been your sales process how data analysis you have been doing so that would definitely get some insight so 6:30 to 9 uh, i'll be conducting a master class on making wow the title of the master class is making wow presentations that close deals because as i said that uh, when you get an opportunity when you get an appointment for uh, you know making a presentation then generally Uh, that's like a very very um, it's a very it's a very big opportunity because the stakeholders are are actually you know putting that time in their calendar and they are investing their time in that calendar uh, that 45 minutes or one hour with you how do we really make that work and uh, lay, lay, take it take the uh, deal more towards a closure so that's what we discuss tomorrow it's not a powerpoint class we do discuss good points about powerpoint and even other tools like canva and prezi but it's not a class about making beautiful slides it's a it's a class it's a master class about how do we make that presentation slot really get us the contract right and i have put in the link to tomorrow's master class tomorrow at 6:30 pm uh, so making wow presentation and there's a link out there so you all can register in there and also uh, asini there is one question from shri krishna patil so he wants to know about lead generation which he missed previously and there is also one more question which says that you know what if my client is not on social media so today we did not actually discuss lead generation and lead generation is a you know big topic and uh, again like we have generally uh we do we do a set of actually three classes the first one is outbound like getting lead generations from email and uh, and uh, uh, calling the second one is actually about social media marketing getting leads and brand building from social media and the third one is on making wow presentations 
So today we were talking more about how to target decision makers. We didn't really discuss uh, much about, um, about lead generation today. We do have a masterclass from time to time. So I will let you know about that. Ma'am, what if decision makers are not on any social networking platforms? Um, well, they should be. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, decision makers may not be on any social media platforms. If they are from larger companies, there could be certain press articles written about them. There could be announcements of when they have taken over the job. And if they are very, very, very like uh, unknown people, like, you know, some people in some sectors, it is possible you don't know anything about them. But doesn't matter, go with confidence and ask a few things and try to build something common based on that. If nothing else, go with the conviction that you are taking something which is helpful for them. And then find the common ground as you go along. Yes, sometimes it does happen that there is someone who's absolutely not, there's no information about them anywhere. It's a private limited company. You know, nothing is known beyond the name. It does happen. Uh, it, it may not be that easy to find common ground before before you go there, but after you go there, you can still find common ground. Yeah, so also another thing, you know, so actually just a thought came to my mind that, you know, if you are there and you are waiting at the reception, so they do have their journals or their NCD going on. So from there also, if you could immediately take a bit of information and build up on it, so that might... So you can see corporate films which are playing in the reception that also gives you a cue as to what is very important for them. Yes. So that also gives you a cue of, of, of uh, initiatives that they are pursuing. Yeah. Emails going in spam or so they might not have any other contact details other than representative. Prasen, Prasen is asking this question. Uh, emails are going in spam. Okay. So uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, generally nowadays for marketing, we can't just send one email and hope that we will be in front of the CEO. That's not how it works. B2B marketing is, uh, and I say this in most of my, uh, you know, most of my um, sessions for some of you, you may be sick of it. I've said it too many times, but basically B2B sales now, even before the sale, so, so when it becomes a lead, before it becomes a lead and after it becomes a lead, which is what we call the bio journey. Before a person becomes a lead, they may visit your website. They may read your LinkedIn post. They may attend a webinar like this. They may pick up the phone and call or they may accept a call or they may open an email that they have received from you. And then they may say, okay, send a salesperson to talk to me. So they, before the person becomes a lead, I, I described about four touch points, but actually in B2B right now, it could be something like 10 to 12 touch points. So if your email is going in spam, you still have to do a lot of other things. You know, you, 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 the same person, you could send a message on LinkedIn, the same person, you could invite them to attend a webinar. You need to do a lot of things. Don't look at things in, in B2B marketing in isolation. For example, don't, if you are publishing quality content on LinkedIn three times a week, then don't say that it's not leading to leads. I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. Last year, the research showed that for all the websites in the world, the maximum traffic came from a source called direct. What is direct? Direct means I know the brand march. I know Pradhan's company is the brand march. I go to Google and I type the brandmarch.com and I go to her website. That is direct. Or you know me and you come to go to Google and you type the market access, not the, you type marketaccessconsulting.com, you come to my website. That is direct traffic which means that the, the brand has been built before the person comes to the website. So a lot of the stuff you do on LinkedIn is driving uh, your website traffic. You may think I've been doing LinkedIn for six months, no leads, but remember it's a matter of touch points. So if just emails are going into spam, you still have to do a lot of other touch points, right? Both inbound and outbound to get leads. Uh, right. Yeah, we're talking more so about actually, I would like to add in here, like, you know, email going to spam technically, like, you know, since it's come up, I'll just put in one point here. So email goes into a spam only when you do bulk uh, messages or, you know, you use software that wherein you are probably procuring a database, like, you know, an HR database 
or a CEO of a database, and then you shoot up a bulk email. So that is where a possibility is there where email goes to spam. But then, you know, when you have genuinely people coming into your subscription list and they're signing up for your subscription and you are communicating and interacting with them on a regular basis and building that customer journey with them through blogs or, you know, through some other insights, then the question of getting into a spam is not there. So, for example, today we have 20 plus participants out here. So sending out an email to them after the session is going to add value to them and they would appreciate it coming in from Suhasini. And that's how Suhasini will be, you know, building a rapport with each one of you and all the participants out there. So this is uh, spamming will definitely be when you're doing a bulk email, but when you're doing focused email to the subscribers, the spamming aspect completely goes off. Uh, we have another question here, Suhasini. Yeah, yeah from Sumedha, I'm seeing the question. Yeah, yeah. so you, you want me to read? One question is that decision makers are, when you ask for the appointment, it says, we are busy. We will uh, plan this after going through your mail or next week, and it doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, Sumedha, you have to think about the messaging uh, and try different, different types of messaging. And also, uh, again, what I was telling you about B2B sales, the call to action, if the call to action is give me an appointment, give me an appointment, give me an appointment, that may also be a little bit like going out on a first date and saying, you know, let's get married or something. So I said that, I said that when, when your prospect attends something like a webinar from your side or downloads a white paper from your site, that's a deep engagement with your brand. Like today's, today's, this webinar is all of you have done a deep engagement with my brand because some of you, like I know Sumedha had attended a class of mine earlier. Some of you may have just seen my earlier LinkedIn live. Some of you may have seen my ad on Facebook or Instagram. So those are just uh, minor touch points. This is a very deep touch point. And after this, if you want, you may want to be, you know, have me as your consultant or your trainer. So similarly, if all your communication to people is only saying, give me an appointment, give me an appointment, give me an appointment, then maybe you need to think about other call to action, you know, that that could be. Yes, so, so the value addition, Suhasini, is like, you know, it's not always being, when we're talking about targeting it for sales of B2B, it's not being salesy. It's being, you know, putting the value in some way to the customer where they would connect with your brand. So for me, it also works, you know, uh, when I do some work and I put it up on my WhatsApp status or I broadcast. So some clients, you know, at some point a year back or somewhere where I have met them or some person I've just interacted. So I have seen instances where they have replied and they ask me, okay, Pradna, so what are we doing? I have this coming up. So let's have a chat. So uh, a little small WhatsApp uh, status also gets you those leads as long as you know you are able to connect with your audience in a very meaningful way. Very true. And uh, Sumedha said not having a CTA in mail can be a mistake. Yes, it's a huge mistake. 